In health news, our country is in the midst of an opioid overdose epidemic. Anne-Marie Tiernan joins us with some new research which highlights the path of the pills. Anne? Well, hey there, Bruce. The CDC estimates that half of all opioid overdose deaths involve a prescription drug. So the question is, where is it coming from? Dr. Steve Samuel joins me today live at noon from Franciscans Health with some doctor's perspective. Thanks for joining us. Thank you for having me. So you, you hear this. We know we're in an epidemic. What's your take on this from a prescriber's perspective? Well, the, these drugs that are being used are coming from doctors. Unfortunately, they're usually being misdirected. The patient's either taking too many of the medications and causing the overdose or the patient uh, is obtaining them from a family member or a friend and using them illegally. Okay, so what are some of the guidelines that have been put in place to try to curb the supply? State of Indiana has put some strict regulations in place several years ago. If you're taking more than 60 pills in a month, you are required to sign a pain contract with a doctor. That means that you'll only get pain medications from that one doctor. He'll check on a site to make sure you're not getting them elsewhere that the, they're being prescribed by other physicians. Uh, you need to sign, um, a, a take a depression screener and make sure that you're not depressed and that may be the source of your pain. And then from time to time throughout the year, the doctor will ask you to either give a urine or a blood sample to make sure that drug is in your system and other illegal drugs are not in your system. So that's for people that are taking on average two pills a day over the course of a month. But let's talk about the people that maybe get this drug for, uh, you know, they went to the dentist or they had an acute pain. They are reporting, 66% of those surveyed reported holding on to that medication after they stopped using it, kind of like holding it back just in case. And, and we have some other figures as well. Mm -hmm. Yes, absolutely. I think patients are worried that the, the symptoms they were having will come back, so they want to keep that medication. But they need to make sure they keep that in a very safe, locked place in the house if they're going to do that. Because unfortunately, one in, one in uh, five people will divert that drug to a friend or a family member. I think they're well-meaning, but they should not be prescribing drugs unless they have a medical license to do that. Right, when 20% are sharing their leftover pills and then they say 73% say they shared the medication to help other people manage the pain, 14% said they were likely to share the leftover pills with a family member in the future, and 8% said they were likely to share that medication with a close friend. What's the big problem here, Dr. Samuels? Uh, narcotics are extremely addictive, and so it takes just a very short period of time of being on a narcotic to become addicted for some patients. And so again, if you need that kind of control for your pain, you should be doing it under a doctor's supervision not from a friend or a family member. Well, and, and do you think people understand just how addictive these drugs are or perhaps the complications that could result giving them to someone that you don't know what, what their medical history is or what other drugs they may be on? No, that, that's the other problem. I think they don't know how to use the drugs. They're not taking them in an appropriate fashion frequently, overdosing themselves with the medication. That's where the accidents occur. There are good places to get rid of these drugs. If you're not going to use them, okay, and you don't want to keep them under lock and key for future and you want to get them out of the household, one place we recommend is rxdrugdropbox.org. It's a site you can go and find where local places in your community you can get rid of these drugs safely and effectively. And, and we're also finding that if you hold on to them, and 66% of people surveyed say they do, that you put yourself at a higher risk for crime as well. Oh, a absolutely. Again, it, it's best to just get these out of the household. If you're not using them and you're not worried about the, the, the pain that you were treating before, uh, coming back, it's time to get those out of the house. There are other great ways to treat your pain as well, too. Tylenol, anti-inflammatories, a drug called Ultram, which is a controlled substance but non-narcotic can be an option. There are pains for neuropathic pain, for pains by irritated nerves called Neurontin that works good, very good. And finally, physical therapy, uh, massage therapy, uh, acupuncture, um, uh, going to a pain doctor uh, for injections can also help with your chronic pain. Yeah, and people find help with uh, chiropractic care as well. Dr. Steve Samuel's a problem that, that will not be going away anytime soon. No. Okay, thank you very much for joining us.